Hello Internet! Today I wanted to talk about noise removal with low pass filters, moving average specifically. I'll try to be more practical and beginner friendly with this one, let's see how you all like it. So let's say you have an Arduino set up with an analog input. Here I have a potentiometer hooked up and its measurement is a little bit noisy for my taste. So let's try and get rid of that noise. You can deal with that by averaging a couple measurements before printing. I'll be using a simple moving average filter with 10 elements. You need a data buffer to store the past values. Here's what the buffer looks like with the array indices. Averaging, maybe a bit counterintuitively, does not start with averaging, but rather with updating the buffer. So you need to shift the old values to the right, starting at the last but one. Then you add the newest measurement to the zeroth position. To get the average, you add up all these values and then divide by 10. Now, before actually deploying this code, it could do with a bit of optimization. Right now there are two full loops over the entire buffer, and that won't scale well. So to get rid of one loop, you can use what's called a circular buffer. Instead of keeping the newest entry always at the beginning, you keep filling the buffer. And then when you reach the end, you jump to the beginning. The key is that you keep track of the data index and you start the averaging loop next to the data index. And of course, when you reach the end, you jump to the beginning. The modulo operation is your friend for indexing. Circular buffers will work well with more advanced weighted average filters, but for a simple moving average, there's one more improvement. Let's look at the averaging formula for the current step and the previous for a 5-tap filter. You can collapse these two by subtracting, getting the difference between steps. Rearranging gives you this update rule that eliminates the looping entirely. I haven't found a name for this type of implementation, so I decided to call it Delta SMA. So how does this work? You keep going around the circular buffer, subtract the old value, update the measurement, and add the new value. Don't forget to divide by 10 in there somewhere, and that's it. Here's how it works on the Arduino. I can kind of keep the analog reading within one digit, which is a nice improvement. So what now? Is this enough? Do you need more and how much? Real engineering starts with design. You know, measure twice, cut once. But in order to design and tune a moving average filter, you need to understand white noise. You gotta know your enemy. Here's a step signal with added Gaussian white noise. This is the most common and basic type of noise you'll see. It matches pretty well the electric noise you pick up with analog inputs. First, the Gaussian part means that if you take the distribution of the noise, it will form a bell curve. This is called a normal or Gaussian distribution. Second, the white part refers to the timely arrangement of the samples. For example, you could unwrap the distribution in a descending order, but that wouldn't be noise. White noise samples are independent from each other, so they're all over the place. Using a moving average filter return the original step signal, but not perfectly. It has some remaining noise and delay. These are the trade-offs that you'll need to understand for the design. Back to normal distribution. Here's the equation for its familiar bell curve. This is the probability density of the normal distribution. It shows visually how many samples you get in certain areas relative to others. 
The mean value mu is usually considered zero when dealing with noise. The most important parameter is the sigma. Sigma is the standard deviation, but you'll often use the variance, which is sigma squared. The normal distribution will contain about 68% of its samples within one sigma range from the mean. Two sigma gets you 95% and three sigma 99%. For me, the two sigma range is usually enough. If you look at a noisy signal and kind of squint your eyes, this is the width you will see. Now the rules to remember. Multiply by a constant gain, the distribution stays normal. Add two noisy signals together, still a normal distribution. Here's the combination formula for the variance. We'll be dealing with independent samples, so you can forget about that last part. So, multiply noise by a constant. The standard deviation scales up with the gain. Well, the absolute value of the gain. You can't ever get a negative deviation or variance. Add the two noise signals together, the variance is added up. That means the deviation is the square root of the added variances. And uh, keep in mind for subtraction, the variance is still added up. Let's apply these rules to the moving average. Averaging means adding up all the values and dividing by the number of elements. This is all gain and multiplication, so normal noise in results normal noise out, and we can take the variance of the average. According to our rules, the variance is scaled by the gain squared, so 1 over 10 squared. The individual variances of sigma x just add up. One of the tens cancel out, so this means averaging 10 will reduce the variance by the factor of 10. That's great, but our indicator is actually the standard deviation, so that is reduced by the square root of 10. And of course, you can generalize this to any number n. So here's how it looks like in practice. A 9-tap moving average filter will reduce the noise by a factor of 3. Filtering doesn't come free though. Nothing in life is ever free. The first cost of filtering is delay. Time is money and delays are bad. Especially if your system has a feedback loop somewhere. A moving average has a delay of n-1 over 2. A one-tap average filter, if you think about it, does exactly nothing at all. That should cause no delay, and uh, that's why the minus one. For larger buffers it makes sense that the delay is about half the buffer length. Kind of a balance between the oldest and the newest value. The second cost of filtering is high frequency attenuation. Well, sometimes this is a cost, sometimes this is intentional. Here's a comparison of what this means in time domain and frequency domain. Now, don't be afraid of fancy words like frequency domain, it is only a graph that shows the output amplitude as the filter reacts to different sine waves on the input. On the left, here's what it looks like in time, now neglecting the delays. You have a cosine wave and an averaging window. This dot shows the exact average of this particular window, and the yellow signal shows the moving average signal. The dot also neatly corresponds to an amplitude level on the frequency chart. So let's see. At zero frequency, which means a constant, the output exactly matches the input. As you go up in frequency, the output amplitude goes down. When you reach the point where one entire wave segment is in the averaging window, the output goes to zero. Going further, when one and a half wave fits in the window, you get somewhat a large amplitude again. In the frequency chart, since amplitude is only measured positively, the absolute value is used for this kind of ripple. And then you fit two wave segments and get nothing again, and so it goes on. As for design and tuning, when I know a specific frequency I need to keep, I tune the filter to fit one quarter wave into the averaging window. When I know a specific frequency I need to get rid of, I tune the window to have the same size as the wavelength, placing it in the first cancellation spot. But why does this matter? It matters because there is a certain useful frequency that you need to keep. Here's a square signal and its filtered equivalent. Now I'll add noise. 
For example, you could still reconstruct this binary signal by looking at the filtered value and checking when it is above or below the middle line. Now add more noise. This is getting a bit much, so I'll crank up the filter as well. We're still fine. Now add ridiculous amounts of noise. At this point, if you increase filtering, you won't get back the original signal. The signal to noise ratio exceeded the capability of our filter. You can reduce the deviation of the output as much as you want, the problem is that by doing so, you filter out the useful signal all the same. This is kind of the Shannon Hartley channel capacity theorem in really simple terms. You can google it if you feel like going down a rabbit hole. So let's apply all that to our Arduino setup. Here I'm trying to move the potentiometer up and down as fast as I can, but it has quite a bit of friction. Ok, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, 12. We have 12 peaks in this buffer, and the buffer has 500 values. So divide all that, and you get uh, 41 samples for a wave. You want uh, about a quarter of the wave filtered by the moving average, and that gives you about 10 samples for a moving average filter. So here's what it looks like uh, with the filtering turned on. It follows my movements rather well and uh, also reduces the noise. Now we just barely scratched the surface of filtering algorithms. I'm definitely going to talk about the exponential moving average and the rest, we'll see. Tell me in the comments if you're interested in more. Alright, thanks for watching, bye.